Hello, I'm Joanne, and this is Joe Mama's Garden. Today, we are going to harvest from the desert. This is a mesquite tree right behind me, and these pods are dry. And I'm going to go ahead and collect some and show you how I make mesquite flour. I'm going to go ahead and collect the pods that I can reach. Um, I prefer to take them off of the tree uh, instead of the ground just because sometimes bugs will bore into them and lay the larva. But if I do get some from the ground, I will check them over, make sure there's no holes, and I will go ahead and utilize them also. On our property, we have two different kinds of mesquite. We have the ones that are just the yellow pods, and then also we have the ones that are colored with more of a magenta color. Those are actually a little bit sweeter. I like to do a little bit of a blend because the flower actually is sweet and nutty. A couple of these that I got off the tree have the little holes in them. That is where the bugs have bored and laid their eggs. So I am not going to keep those. Okay, I think this is enough. So we have about a half of a bucket of the pods. I'm going to go ahead and um, take them inside. I'm going to lay them over two cookie sheets, put them in the oven at 200 degrees for two hours, and that's going to finish drying out the pods if there's some moisture left in them. And then we can go ahead and process them. We can mill them into flour. 
You know what I just saw behind me? Look at the cactus. It is just about time to harvest all of these magenta fruits. Those are prickly pear. I like to harvest them and make that into some jam or syrup. Just about time. The mesquite pod is so amazing. It contains about 35% protein with the bean kernel inside. When you mill it, you mill everything, the outer portion and the bean inside. And it has sucrose, which is the sugar content that is um, in this pod is sucrose so you don't need insulin to digest it so this is a very low glycemic um, product index product it um, really is full of fiber you have calcium potassium magnesium and lysine as part of this pod you have a little bit of fat in here, believe it or not, um, about 3% fat. And you mill this, you can add it to drinks, you can add it to smoothies, you can add it to foods, I just sprinkle a little bit on there, and you're going to get a lot of fiber and a lot of nutty flavor. Um, it also has a little bit of a molasses flavor because of the sucrose that's in it. This is an awesome, awesome, amazing gift from the desert. I am harvesting these pods actually before our monsoon is beginning. And there are going to be two seasons that the mesquite tree produces pods. This time of year, which is um, now July, the very early July, and then it's going to do it again in September, September, October. Now in September and October, after we received all of the rains from the monsoon, those pods are going to have larger beans in them. And when they're still green, I prefer to um, go ahead and cook them like I would edamame. And you get a lot of protein from the bean that is in there before it's dried out. Because obviously the pods, the way they are right now, um, you know, you can't, you can't chew them. They're hard as rocks. But we go ahead and mill them as part of the flour along with that outer pod. It is hot out here. I am sweating. It's humid. It is a hundred and whatever degrees and it's time to go inside and let's get these processed. I just went ahead and wiped the pods down with a damp cloth um, just to remove any dirt that might um, be there and I'm going to go ahead and lay them in a half sheet cookie sheet and put them in the oven for two hours at 200. Now I'm going to go ahead and make some dinner and we're going to get these out in two hours. It has been two hours since we put our pods in the oven. Now they are cooled and now they're very dry and ready to process. So I have this KitchenAid mixer. It is a professional unit. Um, it's the six quart 
or six and a half quart um, mixer. And the reason I have this larger mixer is because it burnt out the motor of our smaller one. I would suggest that you have a motor that can definitely handle um, a milling unit. And this is the milling unit that I have. It goes to, um, it attaches to the KitchenAid. And this is how we're gonna mill the flour. I'm gonna take this out of the box. I'll show you what it looks like. This is what the milling unit looks like. This is the area that you can uh, make it smaller to do a finer grind. And I'll go, I'm going to process this three times. Um, the first time with a coarse grind and gradually to a finer grind for the flour. And you will need this because a lot of times on the gears, the um, the pods do get caught in there and there is still possibly some residual moisture. So I'm just going to attach this to the mixer. Tighten this down and we're ready to go. The flour milling unit does have a couple protective screens. It has a smaller screen that is on the base down here. I have removed that because I find it's very difficult to get the pods into the milling portion um, when this is on. And then I do keep this top screen on um, unless it's going to hinder a lot of the pods going through. The pods are going to go through this top and it will come out here on the bottom. So I'm going to put a large bowl to catch all of those pieces and then I will have a second bowl that I will go ahead and transfer um, the for the second grind, I will go ahead and take it out of this bowl and put this one underneath it and, and do it a third time. It's going to be very noisy, but let's go ahead and start milling. I'm going to turn the um, mixer all the way on. Just don't put your hands underneath it. Just with that small amount, we already have some flour here. Um, this is grinding very well. I may only have to do it two times, but this is the flour that we have so far. Let's go ahead and continue on.
I did disassemble the milling unit because what happens sometimes is there's so much sugar, uh, natural sugar, sucrose in there, that it starts melting and you do have to remove it. So I'm going to remove that, give the motor a break, and start again. Okay. That was a hard one to clean because all of the sugar had hardened it like concrete. But it's all clean, got it back together. I think I'm just going to go a little bit slower and not put as many pods in. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it was just getting going, having too much in there and it was heating up, and then the sucrose was turning into caramelized sucrose. So let's do it again and let's go a little slower. Now the very last step is to put it in sieve and you're going to get the coarse pieces. Um, you're going to leave them behind and you're just going to sift the flour into the bowl. And then that's it. Next, you're going to store it. Store it in a half gallon mason jar and put a few toothpicks throughout it. I put about eight. And what that does is it absorbs all the humidity and then the flour doesn't stick together. You can also put it in a bag and put it in the freezer and you can grate it to use it. I prefer putting it in a mason jar with the toothpicks just so that it's readily available and it is just like flour. Thank you so much for joining me today, and good luck in making your mesquite flower in your desert harvest. Until next time, goodbye.